much, Christoph, and uh, thanks for thanks for your leadership of this committee over the last year. Uh, we weren't always the easiest group to uh, steer in a in a particular direction, so I appreciate your good humor throughout this. Um, as Christoph mentioned, I'm a professor at Carnegie Mellon University here in Pittsburgh, and uh, one of the things that I'm lucky enough to be able to do is to help teach the next generation of AI researchers and AI ethicists. And I think one of the things that's really striking about this committee is that what's become clear over the last few years is that the next generation really needs uh, tools to help support them in their efforts to create more ethical AI. I'm continually struck with the, uh, the undergraduates that I teach as well as the graduate students at how much they want to do very ethical work, ethical uh, considerations are important in the AI work that they want to be doing. And yet they look and they see uh, sets of principles without much that gets translated into the actual industry. Uh, and that is, to be frank, uh, true as well in the automotive industry, um, much of which is based here in, in Pittsburgh, the autonomous vehicle industry. Uh, I think Pittsburgh is one of the, the global hubs of it. Um, and I think in that sense, uh, I, I very much echo Ida's comment that one of the things that is absolutely critical right now is to find ways to translate policy into practice. And this committee uh, was, I think, an exemplar of how that can be done in an effective way uh, that is sensitive to the needs of industry policymakers and the, the realities of the technology. Um, we didn't end up going down uh, side streets that didn't, that didn't lead anywhere, but we're able to stay focused on the practices and processes that really can make a difference. And I think one of the things that that connects with is the way that um, actually uh, I would suggest that uh, folks in my community and the academic side have, have perhaps not contributed as much as we could to many of the uh, discussions around autonomous vehicles and, and ethical considerations around them. Because so much of the research in academia has focused on trolley problems, on trolley dilemmas, these cases of um, uh, considering when an autonomous vehicle may be forced to decide uh, which of several individuals or groups would be harmed because of an inevitable accident. I think one of the things that is notable is that when one talks to people who actually develop autonomous vehicles, many of them are very surprised at the, the high level of interest in trolley dilemmas, uh, precisely because they, they happen so rarely. I mean, um, I've been driving for many years and have never been in a situation where I was forced into an accident and I had to decide who might be harmed. And so I think one of the things that was really valuable about this committee's efforts is that we successfully, uh, under Christoph's leadership, um, managed to look very broadly at a really wide range of issues that are actual real world challenges for autonomous vehicles. Uh, cybersecurity and privacy concerns, I think, are near the top of that list that are not necessarily widely discussed in the AI ethics literature coming out of universities and research institutes. Um, they are discussed some on the technical side, but not so much in the ethical side. And I think uh, the focus of this committee on the practical and real world challenges was really important uh, because we do need to move forward from principles to practices. We do need to provide the next generation with the tools that are going to be needed as they design, develop, and deploy these technologies. Now, um, I think that being said, I think one of the things that is uh, was also really wonderful to see and, and was a bit of a surprise for me was that although the proposals that we give in this report are, uh, I think, quite concrete, they are very close to the kinds of proposals that could be translated into policy or industry practices, many of them also raise critical research challenges that uh, provide opportunities for academic and industry researchers to really take the lead. There are questions that were raised through the development of this report that were going to require more research to, to be able to answer. So for example, questions about how we might measure some notion of system transparency, given that there are, very, there are many different stakeholders, many types of data, many types of system performance. So what is it that we are actually trying to capture when we develop measures of systems transparency that can then be used in policymaking? Or when we think about some of the trade-offs that arise, for example, uh, increasing human autonomy by providing people with more transportation and mobility solutions can also lead to 
increased number of vehicles on the road, which can offset some of the environmental or uh, traffic time gains that we might hope to have from autonomous vehicles. So there are technical questions about what kinds of solutions between networking, electrification, and other uh, add-ons to the autonomous capabilities might help to reduce or minimize the amount of trade-offs that we have to do. And so, I mean, I think one of the things that, that certainly um, I hear from other academics is that these kinds of committees are just for policy people, or they just lead to bureaucracy and regulation. Um, and, and that the only interesting challenges in these committees are about the policy language. And I think one of the things that was really uh, came home to me throughout this process is how much this committee's efforts extended far beyond the sort of nearly bureaucratic. And I don't mean that to be, um, I mean, the bureaucratic is incredibly important and the policy is incredibly important, but there were also a huge number of research challenges that were raised and that it, it highlighted the ways in which serious efforts to actually develop the kinds of practices, policies, processes that are of vital interest to all of us um, are actually raising serious research questions as well. And so that is, I don't think that the, the recommendations in this report, they are not just for the industry. They are not just for the policymakers. They very much are for those of us on the, on the research side because they provide us with a new set of questions, a new set of challenges, and a new set of opportunities. So with that, I will turn things back over to Christoph.